All right, time for the uh, final, for now anyway, installment of uh, the uh, solar-powered hot tub. I've had her going for a couple of days now. I'm going to paint the uh, solar collector there so it blends in a little nicer. But what we've got there is a 15-watt uh, solar panel. And I'm going to clean up this wiring a little bit later. And the uh, solar panel goes down into, uh, it looks like I've got a leak here too. It looks like it's just kind of backflowing. Down into that. But in any case, that is uh, the uh, famous, uh, where's it at, Tops Flow solar pump. Works great. For this application, like I said, I'm going to clean up the wiring later. But that is just powered by the uh, panel, so no electricity there. Some fairly uh, simple fixtures as far as what I've got uh, there. I did install a shutoff. Uh, it's just simple. Remember, this isn't pressurized. This is just uh, gravity fed, so that way I can shut that off and fiddle. I'm probably going to put an inline filter in there just to keep gunk out of the pump. But uh, you can barely hear it very quiet. And there's the good stuff coming out of the hose. Remember how this is set up. Just got an inlet and outlet. Out of the bottom there is the, um, well, what's coming out of the tub. Colder water at the bottom getting pumped by the pump. Up into the uh, lower end, which would be the bottom left of the solar collector. And then coming out the top right after being heated up and getting pumped out into the tank. Again, kind of messy with all the spray foam I've got in there. I'm going to get that cleaned up later. I've got a cheap little thermometer. 112. And that's down the probes down. You know, probably about halfway. The, you know, there's a little shy of 300 gallons for this particular tank. But it obviously does well. In fact, uh, my problem right now at least uh, in the high heat of summer here in the high plains of uh, the U.S. works too well. It's too hot. Um, now if I were running just an ordinary pump, which of course you could, non-solar operated, off and on, um, you could just turn it off, although I've read on a number of sites and it sort of makes sense that you don't want to be uh, leaving these solar collectors without something running through them. Um, probably is not going to break the thing, but uh, you're getting pretty hot in there, and so it's always better to have something running through there. So I'm not real thrilled of having that sit there for long, but you know, there may be no um, alternative short of coming up with some sort of system to uh, use that hot water in the home, and that raises its own set of issues. I'm in a freezing climate, so. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do a direct heat transfer into water and all that, but I mean, in the short term, it works. I had to leave uh, the whole top open last night for a good 45 minutes. It was just too hot to get in. So it seems to be working very well. It does not lose much heat. That uh, ugly but effective insulation job, this enclosure I have. I added a couple uh, extra sheets of uh, foam insulating board and uh, leveled the tub and got it up to a height that when you drop that lid down it makes pretty good contact with the top of that tub and then I cinch it up with a couple of turnbuckles and uh, that's my lid and that works out pretty well I think I think that's gonna form a nice tight seal certainly better than just kind of the floating lid I had on some previous versions of this uh, I think that's gonna keep the heat in and uh, I, you know, it's not getting real cold at night either in the summer, but I'm not losing a whole lot during the night from what I can tell. So, uh, working real well. It's kind of windy, so uh, audio may be tough to pick up here, but a couple of little notes. Up here, I ended up putting a couple of uh, hooks here and a seat clamp. This was to eliminate some of the tension on this hose, because otherwise it would pull so tight to the connector there that it would really impede the flow. Oh, it's a windy day. I'm going to have to come up with a better arrangement on this side um, because as I alter the angle here, I have the 
same problem so far. I've just got a pair of vice grips there you know, to seal that up too. But as I said, I'm not exactly hurting for heat right now. But these vice grips are keeping that hose from uh, tightening up too much and keeping the flow there. Yeah, let's get back out of the wind a little bit. I originally started with that collector optimized for maximum solar gain. Um, angled much more uh, horizontally rather than vertically, but as I say right now, I've got an overheating issue, not an underheating one. So I'm just altering the uh, angle so it's more vertically oriented and that should make it somewhat less uh, efficient in terms of the heating, which right now I really don't need. So, uh, they're never done, right? You're always experimenting, but uh, had a nice soak last night and uh, works really well. Should mention too, I got that little thermometer there and a little uh, light bulb. Reason is I've got a cheap USB webcam there feeding into some online software, Blue Iris. And uh, this kind of ties into my um, uh, house automation system, Z-Wave. Got a controller there, I can turn the light on and off and then just uh, read what the temperature is remotely. It's kind of fun to monitor when you're uh, away. And of course, as I said, that would give me the ability to uh, easily shut on and off a pump uh, rather than a solar controlled one. Um, that would give me a little bit better idea of, uh, you know, control over the heat. But I sure like the idea right now of running totally without electricity. This pump, perfect for this sort of application obviously, and not using a watt of electricity. What I'm looking into is some sort of uh, temperature controlled switch or relay. I think that would be a better option that would shut the whole shebang down uh, when the um, water in the tank reached a certain temperature and then fire it back up when it dropped below a certain temperature. So if I end up doing something like that, that will, uh, I'll update that. But for now, the project is complete enough to allow uh, Helios to do its job and uh, without spending any money on electricity, although obviously a fair amount of money on materials, but you compare this to a uh, traditional hot tub, the upfront expense, and um, the, uh, of course, maintenance costs and all of that. Now, of course, this isn't going to give you what a traditional hot tub will. This is just a soaker tub. For me, the whole bubbly action isn't, uh, wasn't a big deal. I had an earlier cheap portable one that did that. It was kind of nice, but... I really didn't prefer that. So for me, a soaker tub was just fine. And of course, if you're fine with that, that really opens up uh, your options because then you're not having to deal with any of the elaborate plumbing that a bubbler sort of tub uh, requires. Not that you couldn't come up with something like that if you really wanted to for something like this, but for me, it's just a nice quiet soak. And uh, the system seems to be doing a really good job. The collector so far is holding up pretty well, although certainly Hasn't been out in the weather for too long, but it's been much of the country pretty damn hot out here. And uh, it's gotten baked pretty well. Everything's held together uh, so far pretty well. So pretty pleased and uh, count on enjoying this uh, the next couple of weeks. And if I make any changes, I'll uh, update things from there. But for now, signing off.